mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. Hope you had a chance to grab a bite to eat and take a little break. We are here with you, the four folks you see on this screen here. We have Stein, who is the developer and programmer for ACEWeb. We have Matthew, who develops and pro who programs in Student Manager and some ACEWeb. Michael, who is our senior technician, and Chuck, who's over here trying to get a little bit of lunch in, too. But this session is all about you all and what questions you might have for these folks about things you'd like to do or things you wish you knew how to do for them to answer. So the floor is yours. We're waiting for your questions. Rachel, I see you're on in, from Whatcom. We have, okay, Emma's got a question here. And I will ask the question, is there a way to see a list of all special needs for all name records? We have a number of people who have typed none in the field, and it pops up each time we enter their name record. I would like to see a list of everyone who has none or NA in their special needs field so that I can go through and clean that up. Uh, let's see. Mike, you want to field that question? With a report, yes, it can be. We would just build a report that says uh, not empty uh, NM spec, which is the name of the field, and then the report would just pull back anybody that has something in that field. Problem is, is if somebody types in none, it will actually show that as they've put something in that field. It's, it's looking for something in that field, but we could also say where it does not begin with the word none. Um, so it would show, but again, they, it would have to be a, the field would have to have something in it and it would have to not start with none. So if they put a period in front of it or something, we could put that it does not contain none, but that's a big, huge memo field where it would be looking through this humongous amount of potential data. So, Yes, but you could probably potentially still be getting some of the people that have typed the word none in there. Uh, I'm going to ask for control. control. Uh, this truck, uh, if you give me give me a um, panel here, uh, it, Mike is absolutely correct. But I wanted to also reference that you can use the F5 key for that. So if we use the F5 key, uh, again, I'm, this is one I use a heck for a lot. We use manager as our client tracking. <clears throat> With the F5 key, we could go in and say, and again, if you want a quick export to Excel, you can. But w what we can basically say is um, for the criteria, we would say not empty. And this is how you type it, not empty, NMSBEC. And then in the view extra fields, we would type in the name of the field, NMSPEC, hit the OK button. And that will show us every name that has anything in the special needs <clears throat> so that uh, you're able to do it. now. <clears throat> what I like about this particular approach is if I needed to edit, I want to actually get the heck rid of that, I can double click on the name and go to their special needs and just delete it and move on and do that. So that is one of the other benefits of that. Uh, the other thing about the F5 key or about this is that if you've got students that have uh, none in it, <clears throat> we can give you a script to use to automatically delete those none entries so that you don't have to manually go in. And there's a, um, we can give Mike, I can pass that on to you uh, to pass on to Emma, or I shoot a note to her on that. So um, we can do that um, and then um, this is one that actually Matthew can answer, but uh, Emma wants to, or Nikki wants Nikki to know. Wants to know. There, go ahead. Uh, is wants to know is on the instructor email. Can you add special needs? Well, Nikki, 
if you remember, that was asked by Matthew on Monday, and by it's already in there in the release that went out that afternoon. So you can actually check special needs. This was a wish list from Emma on Monday, and I was giving Emma cred that she had some serious power because she already got that. So, all righty, I'm going to let somebody else go from here. So. Okay, uh, this is related to that. Can teachers see that special needs on ACEWeb with instructor access? Stein? Matthew? Uh, <clears throat> don't know. I <laughs> <laughs> don't know. Uh, maybe, uh, Matthew, are you giving that a shot and see what, what happens there? I'm, I I'll, don't I'll remember explore, either. I'll explore that. So hang on a second. I'll bring up the demo. Do I have it on here? Uh, a Swift. All right. Demo. While while he's Other doing question. that, while we're doing that, we have and Chuck, we're seeing your screen as you play around there. So right. best no, practices. I'll keep it clean. Keep it clean. <laughs> best practices for sending unique links for online courses in the confirmation and or the reminder. This is from a newer user. This is Tanya that's asking, best practices, what are your best practice tips for sending unique links for online courses in the confirmation and or the reminder? Matthew, you wanna tackle that one? While Chuck's working here? Yeah, so in the, who? Unique links, links to what? I'm letting Tanya kind of. I, I I'm going to jump in. I think what the question is is like the send up uh, um, show up class, so that the link to register it'd be the ACE web link to the class. Tanya, uh, can you and on, she's on, saying on, like that, link to access like a Zoom link, like a, a, a online course. Oh, Zoom oh, link, or oh. that kind of thing. Okay, so yeah. It, it, you probably wouldn't be able to do that in the confirmation because that's you know right as they register. Yeah. But in the reminder, uh, you could put it like put that link into. I would think like an unlimited UDF would definitely be able to handle a, a big long link like that, and um, uh, you can send that then in in that email. So yeah, get with your technician. And we can work through that and get what you what get what you need. Okay, now I'm going to put a shameless shout out again for tomorrow morning session. That is exactly what we're going to be talking about tomorrow morning in the kind of the new normal behavior, <clears throat> where I'm going to illustrate how Mainline School Night uses the Zoom link uh, in the course notes field to send those Zoom logon routines. So, <clears throat> but again, by putting it in the course notes field, the confirmation will send whatever is in there. And so I'll, uh, I'll share that. Um, still working on uh, Nikki's question. So somebody else wanna pop a question up for the rest of the crew while I do some checking here. So I haven't checked. That's what they're gonna have to send to me, folks. Send your questions. Um, yes, Nikki was confirming that that would be a good um, thing that she wants to see tomorrow too because uh, Mount Airy is also putting Zoom links in the course notes section. So I expect there is a lot of that going on right now. Other questions? Stein, do you have anything on AceWeb stuff that you uh, wanted to look at here? Um, well, or I, reference? <clears throat> well, in terms of checking about this field, or uh, oh, did you general uh, general items here? So, um, kind of an opportunity uh, to pontificate a bit is what we've got you here on. So. Uh, Okay, a reporting question while Chuck yeah. is still working. Uh, Mike, this is from Brittany. Um, troubleshooting, what might be happening? She says um, when she tries to modify a report, 
and goes to the report page setup, she's having trouble. She's not able to modify the margins. Um, she thought there was a workaround for that, but wondered if there was some need or some changes that need to be made to the reporting system in general. Well, maybe Matthew can answer that one because I was going to answer the first one about the ACE web thing uh, real quick because Chuck, you're on the roster right oh, now, right. and but there is an I and I setting for the roster, which is actually called roster fields. And in the roster fields, you can specify what you want to show and it determines the column heading and what you see there. So you see the name and you see the email address and, and so forth. You can pull fields from the name screen, and so in spec can be a field that can be added to that. So by default, our default settings do not have in spec in it, but it can be added. So yes, the instructor could then see on the roster on, on online right there if anybody has any special needs if we add it to the I and I. So yeah, you want to get with your technician because we don't have that by default, but it is a possibility that we can add it. We have the, the tool there that's already set up that we can add it. Good point, Mike, and, and uh, let, me, let me reiterate so that if you are letting instructors look at rosters, you do have really complete control over what the instructors are going to see or not going to see on that. And again, that's through that uh, instructor roster I&I &I that Mike referenced. So. Right, and, and the I&I &I, uh, line that you'd be looking for is actually called roster fields. That'd be one word. Oh, roster and if fields, you, and okay. if you want to see what's possible uh, on how to name the column where you see those rosters there, how there's a column heading, and what you can have, uh, you can always go to our online help and search roster fields, just one word, roster fields together, and it'll pull up the, the I&I, &I, how you can add a, a column, how you can name the column, and what's displayed within the column. So you don't have to call it uh, you know, NM spec, which is the name of the field, you can have it called special needs or you can have it called anything that you your heart's content. Uh, so you can do that on your own or get with your technician for help. Excellent. excellent. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Matthew, you want to um, take a shot at Brittany's question and what might be happening there that she can't what? modify the margins for a page set up? Let me, let me clarify. I'm guessing where you're at. Unless you know Matthew, but but I'm assuming Brittany, you mean when you are looking at an expression box, and you're trying to size the width of that expression, that it is giving you, uh, it automatically pops into properties. Let me see if I can modify and get that. So we'll let Brittany answer that. For it's basically stretching an expression box. Let me do modify. So like if you wanted. Go ahead. I'm Matthew, thinking she's talking about. I'm I'm thinking she's talking to the margins of the actual page itself. This page, yeah, and that's the question, Brittany. Is that the page itself, which would be a page setup, or in a given expression when you're just looking at? Do you want to say widen the box here? And it's it's when it, what what happens is it, is it clicks up the report expression uh, view and instead of instead of being able to let you again do the sizing thing so we'll we'll let Brittany you know, it's a page itself mm, Matthew hmm we'll go to page setup I'm here yep yeah. so which so the width the column width there you're not able to change it or Brittany's asking you to click page setup Again. Again, hang on. A okay. Second. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Gotcha. gotcha. All right. The, okay. So, is it the letter, the the paper size, or the margin? The margins. Huh. Now, see, that's interesting, Matthew. It does not appear. Yep. No, I don't think we've those. ever had control of that I think you have to just make sure you set your first element down one inch and um, you know go on, from there. The form, let me cancel this. So on the form right. itself you, you would need to move these in out to get them the way you want. So Right. That's that's interesting. Yeah, whether that that may be actually a a printer a printer setting but you're right, it just does not appear. 
it could be certain printers do allow that, but um, yeah, I don't. I've never that, come across where. Yeah, I've never run into could. that. So. Well, you stumped the chumps, Brittany. Do we have prizes? <laughs> do we have prizes, Sharon, for that? So, and Brittany's getting a chuckle out of that. So there you go. Um, other general questions, folks, um, that you've got. Um, making sure we haven't uh, skipped anything on that. Uh, I'm going to ask you, go ahead, Stein. If you want to make me the presenter real quick, I can show you the instructor uh, roster setting here. All right, uh, sure. Oops. Coming your line. Show my, show my. Okay, are you seeing my browser there? We are. Okay, and uh, I can. You can see now. I've got a field called special here, and uh, my sample uh, name records have mostly garbage in there, but uh, uh, it is showing stuff there. And the setting for that was here: roster fields. I added NM spec, and then as um, Michael was saying you can put in a colon and then put in the actual name that you want, uh, the actual text you want shown. Uh, I could have said special needs or whatever, but uh, that's how you, uh, it's it's not too big a deal to set that up. And I did want to confirm that that field was indeed supported and glad to know that it is. So that's all I have. Nikki is sending her thanks. A question about ACE web errors, Stein. Um, you know, those ACE web errors are mailed to an office email. Any suggestions or tips to reading those and how they know if it's something they need to look into or any tips, suggestions on reading those error messages? Um. If it's something that's just popping up occasionally, you probably want to get with your tech uh, because if you're getting an error message, it means that something went wrong and one of your clients didn't get what they wanted to get, um, you know, when they were uh, browsing your, your ACE website. Um, they, of course, don't see that detailed error message. They get a nice little, uh, a, a very terse little message saying, hey, something went wrong, please call the office if you have questions or something. Um, so they may or may not have tried to contact you about that, but if you got the error message, it is the case that something went uh, wrong with them. The one, the, uh, the alternate situation where you can get an error message is if the error was caused by some kind of bot or other, uh, you know, internet, uh, uh, automatic internet process that was going on that was not a real user at all, in which case uh, uh, you might get uh, actually a whole lot of error of, of these notices. Uh, they're all, you know, if a bot tries to hit one of our sites and sends uh, fraudulent information or information that AceWeb doesn't recognize or flags as possibly uh, a harmful uh, uh, hacking attack, it will throw an error message. And so you'll get, uh, you know, something like that. You'll get, you know, uh, an error saying that uh, sometimes those are very specific that said, you know, invalid data or um, uh, potentially harmful data or something like that. Sometimes it will just show up as a, you know, AceWeb couldn't recognize this data and uh, and couldn't couldn't return valid results, so it's throwing an error. Uh, if you're getting a lot of errors in a row, those are probably a bot. Uh, they, we do have some ways to, uh, depending on the, um, uh, in, in in some cases we can actually suppress the error messages, so at least you don't get those. You may also want to get with your 
uh, local sys uh, system administrators to see if they can somehow block those uh, unwanted attempts that are coming through. That isn't always possible, but you can, in some cases, uh, turn off uh, if there's uh, a specific flags that are coming with those bot requests, we can say, hey, we know anything that's coming in with this is uh, is really not a real user and uh, we'll just turn off the error message. But uh, generally, the error messages uh, are not going to be something that you can necessarily uh, make a lot of sense of, except there's, uh, it will show the URL that caused the message. And so you can look at that and you can say, if it, hey, that says show schedule AWP in it. It must have come in the, you know, in the in the class uh, schedule list uh, or it came in the, you know, X enroll card. That means it happened when they were trying to put a, a course on their enrollment card. So you can get some idea of, of what part of the program it, it happened in. And uh, particular flags, if it says that, hey, it came in uh, uh, the pay gateway routine, uh, that means uh, there may have been a problem with a payment and or uh, the pay OK routine is a problem with the con uh, confirmation routine. And, and, and when you're getting in there, then there's possibilities that you may have somebody who is in need of a refund or, you know, was at least you know they were trying to enroll for a course and something went wrong and you may want to try to follow up on that but uh, again uh, that's why uh, you know what the techs are there for to help uh, help track those kinds of things down let me uh, so, we're something getting, sorry um, go ahead, something, Mike. something to add in about the the bots is when you get an aceweb error emailed to you and it usually will start off with saying an aceweb application error report uh, the first thing that you see is is really what the error is, and then you see a great big box which says the current URL referred error handler, and and there's a bunch of little um, you know sections, but that big box at the bottom of it it actually says browser, and in that browser, if it's coming from a bot, it will indicate the name of the bot. Like uh, for one, Brittany sent me one a few weeks back. Actually, not a few weeks. Well, yeah, it was a few weeks back, and it was called the Yandex bot. Uh, Yandex bot. And so knowing that, if you look at that browser line and see bot in any way, uh, shape or form, whether it say Yandex bot or some other kind of bot, let your technician know. And like Stein says, we do have a way to suppress that, but that's also where you can go to your sysadmin and say, do we have a way of suppressing bots if we know what the bots um, you know, URL is, which would show in that browser line, but that browser line is where it would show uh, the word, the wording bot and what kind of bot and the URL it's stemming from. So uh, like Stein said, get with your technician, forward that email on to us and we can give you more defined answer. Uh, I have a quick question. We have a couple other new questions. We'll get off of this, but raise your hand folks if you actually get those administrative emails. I'm curious how many of you besides uh, Rachel are getting those administrative emails. Okay, we've got a half a dozen. Uh, I might suggest we're going to answer a couple of the questions, but Stein, if you could find, or Mike, if you could find an error message that came in from, uh, whether it's a real one or a not one, Stein, that you could kind of give a quick view of what to look for. Michael is re referencing that. Uh, we could look at later, but um, let's go to a new question from... Um, um, Emma, again, any plans to add options for multiple coupon promo codes? And I assume, Emma, you're talking like a person on the web could add a senior citizen discount code and a friend of Emma code. All right, that was, uh, yes, from the web, multiple coupon discount codes. Hmm. I'm not yeah, quite sure. I mean, you can do it. It just make sure that the codes or the the description the fee description is different for each coupon you can do it now so you could have two in the optional fees area of the course set up two or more different coupons with a different coupon code right now yeah uh oh at the end when they check out okay um 
So you're, we're asking Emma, yeah, the idea of a global coupon that would be possible uh, against the whole, the whole uh, oh, transaction. Oh, the, the whole, the one-time coupons. Is that what you're talking? Do you guys okay now? Uh, what my, uh, Matthew was talking about is the one-time coupon option, which is possible. Um, and again, uh, if we can hold that, Stein, I think you pulled up. We're looking at Stein's example of a live. I have lost my view. No, we're looking at Sharon's opening slide. Okay, uh, somebody pulled up, I thought, an error message. There it was. Um, so th somebody, whoever wanted to kind of give the, the, the physiology or the, uh, what, are, what are we talking about, yeah. the sentence structure of this. So. Right. Well, this is what, uh, what Michael was referring to is this browser line right here. Uh, this is a normal type browser, Mozilla, Apple WebKit, Chrome. Those are, you know, uh, standard uh, browser references. If it's uh, from some of these bots, you'll see some weird. Uh, what, did, what did you say, Michael Yannix? You know, you'll you'll see some weird uh, uh, non-standard kind of uh, nomenclature in here. And and if it's that, uh, we do have the option uh, possibly to. It's one, a good sign that it came from a bot, and two, there may be a way we can block you from having to get those error messages because uh, a persistent bot can be really, really irritating in that it'll hit your site hundreds and hundreds of times and generate an error message each time. Um, I was mentioning that you may want to look at the either the current URL or the referrer line here as to know what part of the program it came from and uh, in this case, you know, it came from the register page. So that's something that's useful uh, when you're contacting your tech. But really, what's going to be most helpful when you contact the tech, forward them that email. Uh, and, uh, and especially if it's something they need to forward to me or, or Matthew, these detailed error messages are invaluable in, in really trying to debug uh, what's uh, what might be going on. So uh, if you can send this thing, because this stuff down here is probably not going to be real helpful to anybody unless they are a developer with access to the full source code. But for those of us who are in that position, it can be really useful in helping us figure out uh, just what what, what uh, may have gone wrong, so. Uh, very good. Um... Let's and then see. here's, uh, I would just mention Go one ahead. other thing here. The setting in AceWeb INI is called admin email. And uh, these are the people who will get those uh, uh, those messages. And you can put multiple email messages in here separated by commas uh, of people who should be getting those admin emails. So if you're somebody in your... Uh, office and you're not getting them at, but maybe you know the the person who's getting it is a, a a sysadmin who maybe doesn't always have time to deal with the with the <clears throat> the specifics or know when when they should get forwarded uh that might uh, you might you could add your name here and then these uh little flags after here are actually this no bot flag is actually where what we set to exclude those uh, specific bots. So, uh, but uh, that's something your your tech can help you configure uh, uh, in response to a specific situation. We have a suggestion from Melissa, uh, and she said that what she uses is her Outlook, uh, her her email program message rules and that uh, she filters out the AceWeb error messages into a separate uh, mailbox so that it doesn't come in her normal uh, incoming email chain. So again, that's another way of managing, you know, incoming emails is use your rule filter um, in, in your email program. Yes, that's an excellent idea. Okay, what else we got here? Um, I What was I gonna do? 
too. Um, Did it have to do with the one-time coupon or? Well, oh, well, one-time coupon. Um, back to Emma, and I don't know, uh, Stein, you're in control. You want to give me or Matthew, and, and we can bring up a demo and show that one-time coupon option, and then Stein can explain that. Um, when you're in your student manager, if you go to pay preferences, uh, this is where you can set up a one-time coupon. And so Stein, you want to, oh, okay. And so the question from Emma is, can we use multiple one-time coupons at any one time? And I think the answer to that mm -hmm. is no, right, no. Stein? One, no. time, one time, unfortunately, means one time. And uh, we, we- Well, we, and I think what, or, what she's or, saying or, is, could she have a friend of Emma coupon that's a one-time use and a friend of Stein coupon that's a one-time use? going on simultaneously and that's what we're saying no there is only one time one coupon for one time period uh, so yeah uh, emma we uh we are limited on that uh but for folks that haven't used this yet if you wanted to offer a special coupon that a person could only use once during a given term you know you can sp specify the term of your courses based on course code uh, so, like for us, if we said 20S, then I could use this, co this coupon for any 20S course one time before it says, nope, you, you're not eligible for this coupon anymore. You already used it. All right. And Ma Emma says she can live with that. Melissa thinks I need to buy her a drink for that great, uh, that great uh, thing. Well, I will do it next time we're together. So, there we go. There we go. Uh, other questions? Um, comments on that uh, I'm going to go to my favorite topic here and that is raise drop your hands raise your hands if you have used the f9 key I'm going to harp on this until the cows come home in the past month raise your hand if you have hit the dashboard key in the last month all right so we've got a good half of you guys you're Nikki and, and Brittany and all but again, I will uh, ref don't forget about those function keys. And again, if you're a staff member, uh, a coordinator, and you say, again, I, I only want to see what's going on, well, let's just do the refresh. Now, oh, this is old data. Uh, but it, this is a really handy tool, and especially if you're a staff member and you say, I want to know what my courses are doing. What you can do is go ahead and, uh, and I keep Matthew, it keeps wanting to change size on me here. There we go. Um, I want to know what courses are coming up that are less than the minimum, uh, and I want to know how my enrollments are going. So again, if you're an individual coordinator, it, uh, like Brenda, you can do a quick view or candy uh, for just the courses that are in your department to see what's going on. And then if you're a department head, you say, well, I want to know everything that's going on so that um, uh, you can go in and do the refresh and uh, change of the view. So again, that's one that um, I think is a great tip. I'm trying to think. Questions? Sharon, you got a one you want to toss out to this group? Any? We'll put in. Um, I have another Mike, question. Uh, Go ahead, Mike. Ahead. You have, Mike. or Matthew? Not me. Um, I'm going to ask another question, and that is uh, one of the new things that Matthew added to the enrollment report, the F2 Quick View of Courses, is something called Set Filter. Uh, how many of you are using the Set Filter tool right now? Uh, when you're when you're working with courses, anybody? <gasps> Goodness. Okay. Uh, well, let me give you a quick two cents on that. If you have a large unit, and again, I'm thinking um, Brenda Candy at at Mid Plains. Uh, what you can do with this is you say, um, uh, let's show what the regular. Okay, here are all of my classes. There is reporting, manager, fine arts, donation. Oh, this already has a filter on. So let's let's clear that filter. 
clear the filter. Okay. Okay, so we're looking up courses, and what we're looking at now is all of the active courses on the demo. Uh, quick Start, Photoshop, Knitting, Using the Kindle, the iPad. But if I am Candy and I say, I only want to see, I want to view all courses. Uh, let's see, I'll view all courses. And I only want to see courses in my department, which is ASOR Systems. If you click uh, watch what you've got for the date range up here. Put in the department or the coordinator or the subject code or the account code, whatever you might want to say. I normally only want to see certain courses when I'm looking up courses. And you do set filter. When you go back in to look up courses, there'll be a red message at the top of the screen that indicates you have a filter set. And now, the only courses that I am going to see are courses that are in the sponsored by the Aceware Systems Department. So again, this is um, this is something that uh, for larger programs where people might have specific responsibilities for certain courses uh, is a great tool. So, all right. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Chuck, yesterday you were showing folks. Um, our online AceWeb area where they can see examples of everything AceWeb can do. Can you show that again? Rachel, if I'm misunderstanding your question, let me know. But they're kind of wanting to see where the AceWeb sandbox was and all the examples. Can you show that again, please? Well, if it's, was that the AceWeb sandbox yeah. or the... Yeah. Or, or the uh, manager web, manager web manager. where you could log on as a student and actually do work on web through the student view. For the ACE web ACE. sandbox, it's if you did uh, try www try ACE web is the sh is the uh, vanity URL that opens up the ACE web demo. And so that's that gets us here to the ACE web demo. Um, holding classes online portal. Yeah, now the one thing that we've got available now that's been added is called Manager Web. And what that allows you to do is log on as um, if you've got a student manager account you can log on to AceWeb and from a browser, you don't need to go into a um, you know, remote desktop or VPN and you can look up students. So if I want Lowry, I'm gonna do L-O-W and I got two Michael Lowry's. And now I can be in essence a virtual log on as Michael. I can go in and edit Michael's data so for you as staff, you can go in, edit the profile. Um, you can go in, look at the registration history, show all classes that they're enrolled in. Michael, we gotta get you in more classes. So I don't know again, that, that's uh, Manager Web. There is actually a webinar on that in Webinar Archive. So again, um, that's one of the items in there that uh, is, I think, uh, a new feature in AceWeb in the past year that um, I don't know that a lot of people use yet. So, um, all right, questions, thoughts, things you want to see, anything that was mentioned in a webinar that you've gone so far, you said, I'd like to see another example of that. Or to say, we're done and let's grab some lunch and get ready for our one o'clock with Sarah. 1.30, make sure it's 1.30. 1.30 with Sarah, sorry. Yep. Give us That's a little fine. bit more break. That's fine. We certainly don't need to keep them if they don't have any other questions. This session is all about them and things they want to know. Going once. Going twice. Well, Chuck, I guess they're wanting an extended break time, <laughs> and so we are happy to to let them have a little more break time before the next session comes up, and that is, like Chuck mentioned, with Sarah, 
and the topic of her presentation is Cash Fox Reconciliation. She'll share how she's built some bridges across campus to get a very strong auditing process in place. And so we will see you at 1.30, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.